In a field in Judea, thousands of years ago, shepherds tended to their flock. Suddenly, an angel appeared to tell them that the Messiah had been born. The shepherds weren't exactly sure how to react. The sheep didn't take much notice. Then, a host of heavenly angels appeared, exclaiming, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and peace on earth, goodwill to men. As you can imagine, the shepherds were impressed. After the angels had told us that there was a newborn king in a manger, all the shepherds wanted to go. We all wanted to see this newborn king. Thing was, we had a whole entire flock of sheep to look after. We could have taken them with us, but we might have lost quite a few here and there in the streets. And do you know how much mess a flock of sheep can make? Not pretty. So ultimately, we decided that we'll just dash over to see this newborn king just real quick, leave the sheep behind, they'll be all right. But they kept following us. We didn't want to stay behind in a field. We wanted to go too. We heard it was the Lamb of God. That's a figurative term. It was meant figuratively. Your figurative term. You don't even know what the word means. You don't even know what the word means. You're such a sheep. No, I'm not. <sighs> so, an angel visited you as well. Can, can you tell us what that was like? Um, it was really scary because, like, um, I've never seen an angel before, and the bigger it is, the more scary it can be. It was just like a ghost, and it said to me, you're having a baby, I was like, no way. And then it was like, yeah, you are, and I was like, no way, I'm not. <sighs> well, I have to admit, it was kind of weird. I mean, like, my girlfriend's having a baby from God, and it's like, what? No, right, no. When Mary first told me that we were having a baby, I didn't believe it. But when she told me this was God's baby, I really didn't believe her at all. And what changed your mind? Well, this angel came to me at my house in, in a dream and told me that Mary was actually having a baby. Then we had to travel to Bethlehem on a donkey just to pay taxes. And then when we get there, there's no room. We met this horrible, horrible innkeeper. you probably heard of him. Mm. Well, thank you for having me. There's been loads of bad press and uh, it's really good to be able to tell my side of the story and clear my name. Uh, did that just say horrible? Horrible innkeeper! Okay. I just spent 23 days pregnant on a donkey and they tell me I have to sleep in the barn. We were completely full. We had beds on the floor, everywhere, all over the place, even in my own house. So you offered to give them your bed? I, I offered them the barn and they, they went there. I told them we were having God's baby and he didn't care. He just pointed to the barn and said, nah, you can have your baby out there for all I care. A pregnant teenager bangs on my door at midnight saying she is going to give birth to the Messiah. If I had a drachma for every time someone came to my door and said that, I would be rich. My motel is over the road from their inn. I had seven spare bedrooms, including my future Messiah suite, and nobody came. No, they probably forgot to light their vacancy lamp. Of course I had it lit. Everyone just wants to say where that bright star is. Bright star? Yeah, there was like this star above the inn across the road. It was like so bright I couldn't sleep and it was there for like a year. Like an actual star? Yeah, like an actual humongous star. How could you compete with that? Oh well I'm really sorry about that. I had to wait for the wise men and they took forever. So you three are the, uh, the wise men that the star was attempting to guide? Wise persons. Oh, right. Sorry. Wise persons. <clears throat> well, all that thing about us taking like a year to find a star, the best time to see a star is at night. But he traveled normally during the day, so it's really hard to follow a star. It would have been easier if the star had stayed in one place. It kept moving. I mean, come on, people. Actually, that was kind of my fault. Mm. When it was my turn to navigate, I was actually following Jupiter. 
It was really bright at that time of year. Uh, anyone could have made the mistake, you know? I never, ever, ever left my post. How could they say such a thing? I take my job very, very seriously. So you traveled a really long way to deliver these gifts. Can you tell us what you brought? Well, I bought gold. I mean, box gold for a king. It's a perfect gift. I bought frankincense. Uh, frankincense, what, what is that? It's tree sap and you put holes in the tray and these um, beads come out and they smell nice when you burn them. Yeah. I bought him myrrh. Uh, what, what is myrrh? It's pretty much the same as frankincense, except that comes from a different tree. Really? You bought room deodorizer to the king of the Jews? Well, they were in a barn, you know? It's really expensive. You could always sell it. Or you could have just bought gold. What kind of a person gives smelly tree sap to a newborn baby? I mean, they couldn't give it a, a bed for the baby to sleep on or something like that. Nappies would have been much more helpful. We're not complaining. We really did appreciate the gold. Having a baby in the manger disrupted everything. There was lots of noise, it was basically mayhem. People were coming in and out. They just messed up everything. And the star affected the animals too. You're just about to give birth to a baby and then you look over and you just see this donkey staring at you. I mean, who can give birth Well, a donkey's just staring at you? You just can't. It's just, it's just distracting and it's just impossible. You know, there was a lot of issues about having the baby in the barn. I mean, there was the noise, the light, the hygiene issues, the people coming in and out, the angels coming in and out. I'm still finding angel feathers, and they don't even compost. But when this baby came, everything else melted away. Well, one night I snuck over to the inn, and I caught a glimpse of the baby. It was amazing, cute, and changed my life, changed the mood that night and I just felt happy even though I did lose my business. Despite all the hardships we experienced, there were a lot of them, it was totally worth it to see baby Jesus right there in front of us, Son of God. So amazing. It was truly an honour to be there. We literally saw the birth of Christianity. I know he's not really my kid, but when I first saw him, I fell in love with him. It's really hard to explain. He's Jesus right in front of me, like the son of God. I mean, it's tense. You know, it's funny. I'm the star, but I was completely outshined by the baby. Isn't he just perfect? It was just amazing. You felt this immediate peace when you looked at him. On top of things, he was just plain adorable. It, it was incredible. It was like, this really amazing piece. He was so lovely and I, I just felt this overwhelming love for him the moment I saw him. So, yeah. I just felt this amazing feeling. Love. Me, loved. Unfortunately, we had a vision. King Herod had found out that the King of the Jews had just been born. But because he didn't know what baby Jesus looked like, he ordered all the babies to be killed. How could somebody do something like that? Just so evil, so... Because the babies didn't do anything to him. What kind of monster wants all of the babies to be killed? So sad. I just don't like babies. It's true, he doesn't like babies. But your primary reason for killing the babies was to make sure that the baby Jesus was killed, right? Oh, there too, but I just really wanted to kill all the babies. But not our baby. All the babies. What? Well, obviously, we didn't want our baby killed. So we just hoofed up to Egypt and lay low while the heat died down. Lots of sand in Egypt. After all the things that happened, it was still the best Christmas ever. And so, despite the hardships and sacrifices, the toils and the risks, the savior of mankind was born into the humblest of beginnings. And as surprising as it is that the king of kings would reveal himself through the simplest of men, 
It also speaks to the very meaning of his birth. Here was but a human child, a fragile being, who at the same time embodied the wisdom and power of the ages. Through these beginnings would come a change spread to every corner of the earth and to every ear that would hear his story. Merry Christmas.